dystopia warning obviously people think i say that as a gimmick the height of the pandemic when i was telling people what the government were doing people were so horrified that they suggested that i should put a warning on my videos and there's never been any reason to take it away because the one thing the conservatives are good at is just making everything worse at this point my warning is about as redundant as an antibiotic prescription for Johnson's latest bout of itchy knob syndrome. I'll give you fair warning, this is the least of it. Yes, the fact that the government is releasing violent prisoners early because the prison population is out of control, you know, because they've locked up all those Just Stop Oil protesters, haven't they? But if you've committed a serious crime, there's only one option, isn't there? Sign up to be a Tory. With that, you don't just get a, you know, really good salary for being a criminal. You get away with everything. Anyway, let's get into it. Bet you're sitting there wondering, right, so what have this group of upper class old shit houses been up to this time? That man is called Peter Bone. I shit you not. He's called Peter Bone and he has been suspended on suspicion of bullying abusing, humiliating, hitting, asking for massages and exposing himself to a male staffer. This is a guy that described marriage equality as completely nuts but thinks nothing of exposing his nuts to a staff member. Reportedly, allegedly. Honestly, this, this must be on the entry requirements at this point. Have you ever attacked anyone? Yes, in you come. The incidents are said to have taken place around 2012-2013. An official complaint was made in 2017. The process dragged on so long that the person that made the complaint gave up. Do you want to know what happened in that time though? Boris Johnson promoted him to Deputy Leader of the Commons. He must have known. Recently, the statutory complaints process kicked in and finally he was held accountable and suspended for six weeks. The Conservative Party haven't sacked him. He denies all the allegations they always fucking do, don't they? Right, another one. You might remember Chris Pincher, not only because his name is wildly ironic considering what he was accused of, but because he was the guy that was in part responsible for bringing down Boris Johnson, right? Because Boris Johnson promoted him despite knowing that there are allegations that he was a predator. Well, there's two by-elections this Thursday. One is his constituency in Tamworth and both votes are Labour to get out a Conservative. And please, for the love of sweet Mary fuck, get rid of the Conservatives. Do you know who the other one is? Mad nads, isn't it? It's said that Nadine Doris has an IQ of seven. And the reason she didn't step down with immediate effect when she was supposed to is because she thinks time is woke. Not really, it's because she can't think. It's said that she stepped down because she was enraged about the fact that she wouldn't be made a peer. She was named in Johnson's dishonours list. It's said that her latest jizz novel contains a character called Joris Bonson, a bizarre custard-filled scarecrow that relentlessly tries to shag a field of wheat. <coughs> anyway, the Labour Party conference, I went. It was weird. A bit like a music festival, you know, except everyone was wearing the John Lewis sail. At least it wasn't like the toy conference, which my friend a. Thompson quite aptly described as Fashtonbury. Just like a music festival, there was some upper middle class twat trying to cover everyone in glitter. If I wanted some upper class soul to make demands of me, I'd have gone to the Tory conference. Now the right are absolutely shitting themselves about this. The conference actually displayed a government in waiting that understands the public mood, you know? and the public mood is pissed off. They manage expectations pretty well in the sense that in the first term it's gonna be pretty hard going because for the last 14 years, the country has been run into the ground by groping cocaine fueled public school boys. You know, the worst people in existence. who have stood there with a union jack pressed to their knobs to try and distract people from the fact that their hedge fund and mates are profiting from the immense decline that they're causing. One of the best things to come out of conference for me was Rachel Reeves's COVID corruption commissioner which says a Labour government would create a powerful COVID corruption commissioner to help recoup billions of pounds of taxpayers' money lost to waste, fraud and flawed contracts during the pandemic. This has scared the ever-living shite out of the Conservatives because they'd bring in the HMRC, Serious Fraud Office and the National Crime Agency. Now, in the wake of the recent Partygate documentary released by Channel 4 and the ongoing COVID inquiry, this is 100% in touch with public mood. And when you also take into account that despite the fact they robbed from us, were responsible for tens of thousands of avoidable deaths, and then partied whilst doing it, you've got to think about Sunak allowing Johnson to use £265,000 of our money for him to defend himself from the indefensible. The billionaire borrower 
whose trousers are quickly resembling pedal pushers, has questions to answer. Why do I call him the billionaire borrower? Well, firstly, he's borrowed loads of money. And secondly, he's fucking tiny. But he's got bigger fish to fry, hasn't he? Liz Truss. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, up pops the tufted android. What is wrong with her? So what is wrong with her? There's nothing going on in there. She even makes Nadine Doris look self-aware. But just when you think things can't get any madder, Liz Truss. Oh, <laughs> is to unveil a rival growth budget days before the autumn statement to try and upstage Hun. Oh my God. She tanked the economy for the love of fuck. What's going on? Apparently she's going to unleash exciting policies next month. I'm sure the people that have lost their homes because they can't pay their mortgages due to her crashing the economy will be really happy about that. The Telegraph said that the group that she's working with will challenge conventional thinking. No shit. What? When you look at the people that are bankrolling her, it all makes sense, doesn't it? Hedge funders, you know. The people that are swooping in to buy up all the cheap houses that people have lost because she tanked the economy. It's planned. At this point, they're not even trying to hide it, are they? I'd bet good money that trust, quarting, etc. Judging by the links that they had, judging by the articles at the time, planned that economic crash. Because this kind of thing is peak Tory. Rishi Sunak said that there's no appetite for a general election. I say the entire country is pretty sick of posh twats telling us what to do, frankly. Nothing in this country is better than it was when Labour were last in power. Not one thing. Everyone's miserable. And everyone knows why. Now, there's a lot of talk about a snap election on the card. So get your voter ID. Get yourself registered. And stand by. Because we're going to need your help to make them fucking cry.